Hello again fellow audiophiles, I am Wave Theory and today I have another review for you and that is for the SMSL SU9N Digital to Analog Converter or DAC, a 460 US dollar piece that was sent to me by Apos Audio. Apos has asked nothing in return other than a fair and honest review. They have made no attempt to influence my opinion. And so anything that you hear about this unit will be my thoughts and my thoughts alone. All right, so uh, please remember to like and subscribe and to do all of those things that you do to support YouTube channels. And with that, we will get into this. So other than being a digital to analog converter that costs 460 US dollars, what is the SMSL SU9N? Well, it is a balanced DAC for that. Uh, at that, it has uh, balanced analog outputs on it, which I will show you in just a moment. And it also decodes just about everything to channel audio you could want it to decode. At the heart of it is an ESS ES9038 Pro DAC chip, which can handle PCM signals up to 32-bit 768 kilohertz, up to DSD 512. There is MQA decoding on this thing. There is Bluetooth, which supports LDAC, and a new codec called UAT, which I know very little about, but you can click over to APOS's website, which I put in a, a link in the description below. It will be an affiliate link, uh, but you can check that out and read up on what that uh, Bluetooth codec is. All right, so a quick tour of the unit here. We have a nice, compact, small footprint unit here that if you are familiar with uh, the older SMSL SU8 DAC, same footprint here, basically same construction with mostly metal, aluminum, and all of that. That piece right there might be plastic on the bottom, but I think the rest of it is aluminum. Okay, um, it's the same kind of housing. It's well built. It's black instead of the old silver, but like you can tell that both aesthetically and also in terms of features, this is basically the successor to the SU8 which was about a 250 US dollar unit um, a few years ago, if memory serves. Around 2017, 2018, I think is when that unit was very popular. On the front panel, we have a multifunction rotary dial and button here. We have a, a, a display right here, which will show you sampling rate, which input you have selected, your volume level. So this does have a variable output level if you want it to. Uh, so you can use it as a preamp if you wish. Okay, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Pretty simple on the front panel there, right? Uh, we do have the obligatory high-res audio sticker here on the corner of the unit. All right, round back. We have some fun stuff here. We have the Three pin balanced XLR analog output. We have the single ended RCA stereo uh, analog outputs. We have an RCA coaxial SPDIF input. We have a USB input. We have Toastlink optical SPDIF. We have the antenna connection for Bluetooth and we have the input for the power supply here on back. So. Pretty robust feature set. You also get this remote. If you are familiar with SMSL remote controls, this one looks a little bit different, a little bit newer design. Like I don't remember having to push a button to get this remote to talk to the unit. It just did it out of the box, which is nice. Um, and that is a, an improvement, I think, over previous SML. SMSL designs. Um, again, it's a simple remote. It's functional. It helps you navigate the, uh, the menu on this thing a little bit quicker than just using the front panel click wheel thing. Um, and all that. So it's handy for that. It also gives you like a, a button to directly uh, cycle through inputs rather than having to cycle through the menu, navigate the menu to select inputs there. So that makes it a little bit handier. It's also just nice to have a remote because you can adjust the volume and all, and all this. If you use this as a preamp, a DAC and a preamp in a two channel system, for example, you can sit you know, away from it and adjust the volume using the remote control, which is nice. Okay. Um, so I think that's about it for features. Um, it's, it's got a nice feature set for a unit in this price range. Let's talk about sound. So to feed this, the sources that I primarily used 
would be either direct USB from my um, desktop Windows 10 PC or um, the coax input from my Singer SU2 uh, USB bridge, which was connected to that same PC just described, or I would use the uh, optical, the Toslink optical output of my desktop PC's motherboard to go into the optical input of this. For amplifiers that I connected this to, for headphone amps anyway, from the single-ended output of this, I connected a shit Asgard 3, a Garage 1217 Project Ember, a KNHA-1A Mark II tube amp, and a Vielectric DHA V226 um, all-in-one DAC amp, which I reviewed recently, and I'll put a link to that in the description below as well. Uh, from the balance outputs of this, I connected SMSL's own SH9 amp, the THX amp, which I reviewed, and I will put a link to that down in the description, as well as my Vielectric HPA V281 headphone amp. All right, a variety of headphones I used to test this. I'm not going to list them all, but here's just a smattering of them just to give you an idea. Um, Biodynamic DT880 600 ohm. Uh, Sennheiser HD 600 and 6XX, uh, let's see, Focal Radiance, Odyssey LCD 2 Prephaser Revision 1, Hi-Fi Men Edition XS, HE 6 se V2, HE 1000 V2, that's probably not all of them, but again, I, I used a fair, a, a wide variety and a, a big range of quality uh, on that to eventually to evaluate the sound of this. Okay, about that sound. How is it? Well, I mean, the, the presentation here is very neutral, very clean, very, very dark, kind of black void sonic background, which happens with these measurement chasing devices. And if I didn't mention this before, if you're interested in measurements and measurement excellence, this is right up there with the best of them, okay? It's, it's pretty strong in the measurement game. Anyway, moving on. Um, so yeah, clean, clear, black void sonic background, very neutral in its presentation. There might be just a little bit more treble presence and treble energy than some of the competitor, even measurement chasing DACs, just a little bit more, but never to the point where I would consider it glary or overly bright or anything like that. Okay? Um, so it's got that down. The, uh, the resolution is fairly strong. Like, I mean, it's not going to be the most resolving thing in the world. It's an under $500 unit, but it does a fairly good job with detail retrieval, micro detail retrieval, and all of that. Uh, macro dynamics are not standout. Like, there's not a ton of punch or slam or physicality, but it's also not devoid of those things either. It doesn't feel like those things are lacking, but nor are they a standout trait. Let's see. Uh, the spatial presentation is all right. Uh, there, you know, with a, a good amp and good headphones or speakers, you can get a fairly holographic spatial presentation. Again, I wouldn't call it a strength, but nor is it necessarily a weakness in that regard either. Let's see. What else do I have written here? I should say, oh, um, the the tonality and the timbre also pretty good. Okay, like um, because of the, the fa fairly neutral frequency response, the tonality is good. The timbre is, again, not outstanding, not necessarily a glaring weakness either. All right, um, I should note here that the balanced output, and this is pretty common actually, that is not just an SMSL SU9N thing. Like this, it, this happens a lot for DACs really under $2,000, is that when they have both balanced and unbalanced analog outputs like the vast majority of time they sound noticeably better from the balanced outputs now that is not because balanced is inherently better it isn't okay balanced or single-ended if either of them is built from the ground up to be that way they can both sound stunningly good the reason that this is happens is that most of these that have the balanced outputs on them are designed first and foremost to be used balance. And then the 
unbalanced output is just given as a convenience after the fact and usually some kind of kajiggering has to happen internally to get this thing back to having a single ended output. That kajiggering usually comes with a slight loss in sound quality. This one is no exception to that, but it's not alone in that way because I've heard that happen on just about any DAC that's like $2,000 or less that has both balanced and single-ended outputs on it. Very, very rare that that isn't the case. But I think the gap between the two here is a little bit bigger than some, okay? And I will come back to that in a moment too. So if you have, um, a single-ended amplifier, like a, a tube amp, like let's say you feed the balanced output of this to its companion SH9THX amp, and then you send the single-ended output, which they are both running live at the same time, you send the single-ended output to, you know, a dark voice or a bottlehead crack or something like that, some kind of a tube amp. Most tube amps are single-ended, and so there is a little bit of a hit in quality there from using the single-ended output that you should be aware of. Okay, so let's quickly then talk about some comparisons with other DACs in the market. So then again, this thing priced at 460 US dollars. I personally prefer it to the topping units that I have heard um, between two and five hundred, which which ones have I heard now? I'm, I'm drawing a blank. The the D30 for sure was in there, um, which I heard and reviewed recently, and I will put a link to that somewhere. I want to say there was another one uh, in there, but anyway, I heard that one in this price range, and I think this is probably a little bit more natural, a little bit smoother, just a little bit more believable and organic in its sound than that one is. Um, so there's that. I did, like, of the measurement chasing DACs that are out there, this has been one of them that I have, have, I have liked this one more than most of those other kind. Okay, now for DACs that are not necessarily measurement chasing, like the shit Modius, for example, even though that does have very good measurements in his shit's best measuring DAC, it's not necessarily a measurement chaser. That's a $200 piece. I think the Modius from, uh, first of all, the gap in the Modius's performance from its balanced and single-ended outputs is still present. There's definitely a difference there, but I think the single-ended output of the Modius is stronger than the single-ended output of the SU9N, okay? And actually, like, I have the Modius right here. I brought it out to show you here. So I think that from its single-ended output, it's stronger than the SU9N. Uh, so if you have a single-ended device like a tube amp that you really want to use and that matters to you, that is definitely something to consider. From balanced outputs, let's compare balanced to balanced. And I tried this using both direct USB connections and also using the coax inputs of both of these from the twin coax outputs of my Singer SU2 USB bridge. And Generally speaking, I thought they were pretty much even on overall detail retrieval. Right, so anything that one of them could pull out and resolve from the signal, I thought the other one could just as well. I didn't really notice a whole lot of difference there. They have a slight sound signature difference where the SU9N has that just a little bit more treble presence and crispness to it. Again, not a glare. Doesn't really go sibilant or all or all that very often, but it's there is just a little bit more energy in it that you might need to be aware of. Okay. Um, where this is just a little bit more relaxed and smooth sounding as a result. Now, I think the Modius throws a bigger sound stage with more coherent uh, imaging and separation. It also has a little bit more natural and organic timbre to it and it has more macrodynamic impact. So it has more physicality, more punch, more slam, more hit to the sound than the SU9N does. Now, those are traits of the shit house sound. Those are just things that shit is good at, okay? Uh, all of their pieces, be they DAX or amps or anything, you can pretty much pencil and they're gonna have really holographic spatial presentation for their price point. They're gonna have really excellent timbre for their price point and they're gonna hit you, okay? They're gonna have a fair amount of dynamics to them, again, at the price point. And the dynamics can scale up quite a bit, actually. 
okay? But they're not necessarily going to be world beaters in resolution, usually. So this one had the opportunity to beat the Modius in resolution. I thought it was mostly just a tie. So I think, for my listening and my preferences, the Modius is still the better sounding DAC. Okay, so that also means that this isn't going to catch up to the Bifrost 2 or the Denifrips Ares 2 or like the Socris DAC was 1321, might be 1421 now, and I think the 1221 replaced the uh, 1321. Anyway, that, that tier up there with the Bifrost 2, the Socris, the, the Ares 2, and all that, this doesn't catch that. So even though it is priced, about halfway between the Modius and the Bifrost, close-ish anyway. Like its performance does not necessarily fall halfway in between. I am willing to say that even though for my preferences, I like the Modius better, I still think that these two are on roughly the same performance tier um, in terms of actual uh, subjective audio quality. So then, you just have to ask yourself a few questions. Is the $260 that this is, more than this, worth it, provided that you get a remote control, you get a variable output level, you get Bluetooth, you get MQA decoding, and just a, a more robust, more fully fleshed out feature set? Where the only other feature that this has that this doesn't is that this one has an AES input if ever you need it. Okay, I can't answer that for you. Is this worth, you know, 200-ish dollars more than the unit that it uh, su succeeds? Um, and that to me is the, uh, the SU-8 version two, uh, because that also had a remote, the more classic SMSL remote. It also had a pretty good sound, like it maybe wasn't quite as good as the Modius either, but it wasn't far behind, okay? Um, it, but it, you know, it didn't have MQA. It um, <clears throat> didn't have Bluetooth, okay, and some of those kinds of things. Like, so is the 200-ish dollars, uh, are those features worth it to you for the 200-ish dollars um, for this one? I can't answer that for you. I don't know if I would do it, but I certainly can understand why some might because, again, it doesn't sound bad. It's a pretty decent sounding DAC. I just don't know that it, I mean, it certainly does not have the sonic performance to price ratio that this one has, it just doesn't, okay? But it does come with a very robust feature set and you just have to decide if that robust feature set is worth the more than double the price for the Modius or the 200-ish dollars, you know, above the, the SU-8, which I don't think you can really buy anymore, but just to kind of help you place that in the market where it goes. So. That's where I will leave this. This has been my review of the SMSL SU, SU9N digital to analog converter. I am Wave Theory. Thanks for watching, and as always, enjoy the music.